you're probably really good at this. Why, Claire? Because I'm Cause, Italian? Because you make pizza a lot. I never make pizza at home. It's expensive. Why don't you guys stay in your lane for a second? Whoa, 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 we're all driving now. <laughs> too much merging. Legit. I've been tasked with the dough. Everything's important, but I feel like the dough is especially important, so. I guess you gotta kinda start at the base, right? The dough. I mean, it's gonna have dough. Right. Yeah, I mean, I want chew. You gotta have a little yeah. chew, you know, a little gluten and I, structure. And I like the sort of pillowy, like I want those big blisters and bubbles. Yeah, and, yeah. And me too. A certain softness, too. I like to have that little bit of a lip, like the, the crust lip. The raised edge. The raised yeah. edge. Good charring. Yeah, uh -huh. but I want charred on top and bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Little spots, little yeah. speckles. But still, but not like, you don't want it to be, it's like a, a cracker. Like you want no. softness and chewiness still there. So like a good mix of color and char, but like still a dough that like maintains moisture. I like it holds its weight though. I think the point has to droop a little. The point, yeah, fine. Much, the point, yeah. Yeah. But, but the, the whole thing is a soup sandwich. Like and if you pick it up by the crust, you shouldn't lose the cheese. No, cheese slippage. No, no cheese slippage. Like <laughs> I feel like with New York, it's like the foldability. It's like the Neapolitan has that sort of wetter center yeah. and it's smaller. Right. And with New York style, you get like the big triangles and you can right. fold it and you the, the point doesn't droop as much. Well, Claire, you're kind of the, uh, bread person here at BA, so uh, you're kind of on the, on the dough detail. Without the dough, you got no pizza. Okay. That is true. So we'll, we'll see. What we learned from that first, I mean, what we already knew, but confirmed with that first like mind meld with all the editors was that like everything's important. But I feel like the dough is especially important and really pizza dough is not something I've worked with a lot. So I've done like a lot of bread baking, um, and sourdough, but pizza is kind of like this mysterious other realm. So I'm really looking forward to consulting some experts and learning a lot more about it before I come back and like attempt, you know, our version. I have these notes from that sort of group discussion. So I'm gonna bring these over to my right. And this board is here to help each of the editors think about their component in a really logical way. So here's dough. I'm gonna start kind of organizing these post-its. Stretch not rolled, how the dough gets formed. Bread versus double zero, so this is about flour type. Sourdough, that's about the type of yeast. Charred in spots, fresh milled flour. And another yeast question, fresh versus active dry. What we've really been dancing around as a team was this question between New York style or Neapolitan. So today we're gonna explore what makes a real, a classic New York slice versus what's, what's more of a typical, like official Neapolitan style pizza, and then come back, sort through the information, can maybe consult another expert or two, um, and then we can get started. Hey, Scar. Hey, Claire. Hi, how are you? Pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Right. Nice to meet you all. Uh, so today you're going to show me a little bit about your dough. Yes, we are. Let's go downstairs. <laughs> Hope everything's clean on there. Let's go. <laughs> all right, so do you want to walk us through the process a little bit? Sure. How you mix it up? We normally buy flour from upstate New York. It's a mix of high protein and low protein flours. Okay. And we also mill our own flour as well. And so you're milling from grains like this? Correct. These are wheat, wheat berries. berries. Yeah. Uh -huh. These are uh, hard white wheat. We try to replicate New York style pizza without using what 90 something percent of New York style pizzas are, like, you know, chemically laced flowers and stuff. We don't use any of that. And then what about yeast, leavenings? I use a cake yeast, like mm -hmm. a fresh yeast. Mm -hmm. The reason I use this fresh yeast is because it imparts the flavor of breads and pizzas that I had growing up. So what I start doing here is I just put in water, I mix in the yeast, I let that work, do its own little magic. Then I'll add the flour as well, okay. and then I'll mix it up. I'm glad I wore white shoes. We're both wearing white shoes. Yeah. That helps. I learned it's from experience. <laughs> yeah. So you're starting on low just to get everything incorporated. Everything and incorporated. you're just trying to hydrate it, right? I'm trying to form form it, basically have everything absorb. Uh-huh. So I just let that work for a while. So this has come together really well. It's coming together now. It's really I gotta add actually. the rest of the water. I also should be writing this down. Then we would allow it to sit. Uh-huh. And so do you have an ideal like fermentation temperature for the dough? Fermentation temp, room temp. Yeah. Then we add salt. We get the olive oil. Seems like it'd be like pretty fun dough to work with. Oh yeah. Never sticks. Super yeah, soft. Right, right. Hydrated. Really yeah. And is it just one rise? One. No. No. There's uh. So you get one rise when you're boiling. Mm -hmm. You get a slower, slower rise when it's in the fridge, mm -hmm. when it's refrigerated. Mm -hmm. Then you get the last rise when you pull them. Out. We pull them out and we allow it to rise all day. Uh -huh. The day of use, basically. Uh -huh. Day of usage. Uh huh. 
We oil our wood table. More olive oil? Yeah, you actually use real olive oil for the table. I know people think I'm crazy, but a lot of places you'll see they use flour. But I like using oil because it adds like a snappiness to the dough. Uh -huh. Form a ball, turn your scale on, pinch it, cut off a piece, weigh it, and boom, put it down. Uh -huh. So it gets kind of like a little bench rest over That's there. That's part of the ferment, like allowing it to rest and then mm -hmm. ferment a little bit more. I think that might be too big, but. Too big? What is it again? Seven, seven, what am I going Seven seventy-five. Seven seventy-five. okay. If you're, uh, if you're, you know, more or less, you slam it down here, boom, upside down, and there you go. Oh, okay. No, you're good, you That's did it right. That's good? 100% okay. right, yeah. Oh, so you turning it like that? Yeah, like turn it, because it's like getting oil from the side. Kind of. Exactly. Got it. Fold uh -huh. in and then turn. Uh-huh. So Fold it's kind in. of stretching that gluten. Correct. And then it's smoothing out. A... If you notice, it's making it smoother. Yeah. Then I close it up, because if you don't close it up, what happens is when it starts proofing in there. Oh, wow. A gas bubble could form in there. Oh. So when you're opening it up, you get thin spot in the middle. I see. So it's very important. Oh, that makes up. sense. Yeah. Can I try it with this one? Yeah. Keep making dinner rolls. Yeah, you gotta you're, be quick. You're a lot faster <laughs> than I am. So then, how did you do that part? Just pinching. Then <laughs> you close <laughs> that it. That one's not working out so well. You go like that. Ah. Uh, and then seam side down. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So, time to head back upstairs yeah. and see the dough that's ready see to go. See the finished product. Let's go. Great. What I do is give it a little shake so it comes out. Drop it in the flour. Take it out. Press down using four fingers. And then I'm going to start working with it. Then I start clicking it back and forth, knocking the flour off. And, it, and it's also opening it. Oh, wow. Well. So, that's really dramatically yeah, you see how stretching it's it out. It? And it's off to the races. Look at that. This is like see, this is like every the, mayor, mayoral bump. candidate has to do this, and they always do it wrong. Mm -hmm. okay. You just put your finger in the middle. With the other fingers, you push up. So. Such good texture. Mm -hmm. It really is like it's kind of amazing how much texture and how many different textures you get in the dough in such a thin layer. Mm -hmm. mm. Can't stop eating it. No, I can't stop eating it. I love bread making, but I really have not that much experience with pizza. Oh, another thing too, whatever you do uh -huh. for bread, don't, it doesn't don't, apply for pizza. Okay, for so forget all my bread knowledge. No, no, it's good <laughs> to have the bread knowledge. Okay, like, right, so it's like different, you're not looking for the same things in the dough. Correct. That's a, actually a really, really good tip. I think I'm gonna be haunted by Scar's advice at the end, which is like, don't treat pizza like it's bread dough, because that I have a lot of experience with. But overall, like I, I sort of understand his method with the yeast and the flours and the autolies and adding the little bit of oil in the end. That was interesting. His crust, it's so sort of magical in the combination of, of light and chewy and also really crispy on the bottom. So that's, it's really something to aspire to. So this was just incredibly um, fascinating and interesting. Roberto? Yes. Hi, I'm Claire. Very nice to meet you, Claire. Nice to meet you. How Welcome are you? Welcome to Acaste. Thank you. I'm here to learn about dough, pizza dough. We are, you are the place. You're going to be the teacher. This one is uh, where we make the dough. Uh -huh. The yeast is inside. It's a cake yeast. We start putting the flour. It's this. too big, this one. Oh, too big, uh-huh. This is a diaminar machine. So this is more the motion by hand yes. with this machine, I see. So you're using a sea salt. Yes. Wait, so Roberto, for this, it's flour, water, salt, nice. yeast. That's it. No, no oil. No oil, absolutely. No, no oil, okay. This uh -huh. is a Neapolitan uh, recipe. It's How do you know when this is done mixing? Uh, 50 minutes. Sorry. Oh, okay. This dough was made uh, eight hours ago, and uh -huh. we make the balls. So this sits at this temperature for a whole day? Yes. So that's the bulk fermentation? Okay. That is bulk fermentation. And is it, and it, is it expanding a lot? It's gaining yes, a lot of Yes, from this one tomorrow morning, we find over here. Okay. And so when you portion, it's for an individual pizza? For 12 inches, we use 270 grams. You can cut the dough and wait. Basically, it's the same way we make the mozzarella. Wow. Wow, 270. So okay. you have to be confident that you're going to get it on the, uh, <laughs> on the first try. It sounds try. like it, too. <laughs> you want to try my way? So. I'm a lefty. Does that matter? Huh? I use my left hand. Does that matter? No, no, no matter. Am I doing this right? Yes, very good. Ooh, very, oh, very, very, very big. Yeah, and how I can take it away. 276, is that okay? okay? That's okay. Okay. I love this method. I'm going to use this now. 
Now, if you like it, we can go upstairs okay. and make some okay. pizza. No oil in the no. in the box. Okay, we make a round. Very good. So you see, you create the the cross now with all the hair. And so when you're doing that, you're also stretching it a little bit. Yes. Okay. And now this one is ready to go. This is ready to go. Yes. Really? Okay. And now we can do it. It's just stretching. Oh, I see. Stretching it on the peel. Okay. Oh, wow. And now we go inside the oven. Wow. Oh, so it just goes right in front. You don't have to push it all the way to the... No. So you're rotating it to make sure it's getting evenly cooked all the way yeah. around? You see the crust? Mm -hmm. it, it's full with air. Yeah. Don't, count, don't go down. Should we try? Absolutely, it's always. Mm. I'm gonna try some of the edge, just the crust. Mm. It's so soft and sort of pillowy. I love it, it's 55 hours to rise but only 90 seconds to cook. Yeah, that is yeah. amazing. <laughs> so I have these two similar but also very dissimilar styles and now I sort of have to head back to the test kitchen and sort of basically synthesize all that information and really decide like what our approach is gonna be. So we saw Scar, which was doing sort of like a nouveau New York style, and then Roberto Acheste, who's doing sort of a very classical, like Neapolitan. So it's really gonna be more, I think, for us of a hybrid. I'll write that down. We're gonna kind of do this hybrid style, but I still want it to have that sort of slightly thicker, sturdier crust all the way through the bottom. I still have questions about using more of like a natural yeast, so something like a sourdough starter or something, and if that can add a lot of flavor. The other variable to think about is temperature. So Scar was throwing his dough in the walk-in, so it was having this long cold rise. But is it a 24-hour rise? Is it even a 48-hour rise? Or even longer? I'd love to talk to Anthony Falco, who is sort of like a pizza maker extraordinaire and has developed all different styles of pizza dough. So I'm gonna see if he can come in and talk to us tomorrow to help us get started on testing all of these different variables. All right, so we gave Anthony a call and he was nice enough to come in today to answer some of our questions. So thank you for being here. Hi, yeah, thanks. Um, so yesterday, just to catch you up on this whole project, uh, okay. we did some research. So we visited Scar's Pizza and Keste to kind of explore the qualities of like a New York slice versus a Neapolitan. So both, Roberto and Scar use like fresh baker's yeast, like the cake mm -hmm. yeast. Um, but I have a lot of questions about sourdough and like why sourdough is or isn't appropriate for pizza dough. I mean, Let's baker's baker's yeast is, I think if you're gonna use commercial yeast, that's definitely the best choice. I love sourdough and I've pretty much switched completely to all naturally leavened for a lot of my mm. personal pizza making adventures. If you're worried about reliability, or gas production, you can just add a little commercial yeast too, and you're gonna get okay. all of the benefits of the sourdough, uh -huh. but the reliability of the commercial okay. yeast. So a hybrid is, most of my clients pick hybrid. Can you explain what a starter is? It's basically, if you take flour and water and you mix it together and you leave it in like a, a warm place, mm -hmm. it's gonna start bubbling, mm -hmm. you know? And over time, it'll, those cultures will stabilize. And what it is, is it's a stable colony of bacteria and yeast. So they work together to unlock the nutrition, unlock the starch chains. From what I understand of the science, which right. is like, I'm not a scientist, right. you know? There's, like, a, there's a lot. Yeah, it's probably like 90% of the things I say are kind of maybe a little BS. <laughs> right, it's yeah. okay, we're, we're not, we won't watch <laughs> But my pizza tastes good, so it's okay. Right. When you're using the starter, if it floats, that's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Wow. Do you add oil to your dough? Do you add? I even do. You do? Yeah. Interesting. Why? What's the explanation there? It can, at certain levels, help with crispiness. Mm -hmm. We're doing 2%, so it's not a lot, but I will go up to 8% if I want a really crispy pizza. Like in America, I think we want crispy, right? Yeah. You definitely want to use a good amount of white flour because that's how you're going to get extensibility and you're going to be able to stretch it out. So the dough that I made is 20% freshly milled whole grain flour, 60% mm -hmm. The organic high mountain, and then 20% of the ping arts are all purpose. Okay. 3%, 30 grams, salt. You need to strike that balance between dough that's strong and extensible and elastic, but also has great flavor. Yeah, so, okay, exactly. Cool. So, are you just trying to hydrate everything? I'm trying to mix. Okay. You know, I'm pretending my hand is like the dough hook, uh -huh. and I'm just like moving it around on low, which is uh -huh. if I was using a mixer, I would use a dough hook on low. I'm looking to like let time and temperature do most of the work mm -hmm. without 
kneading the heck out of it. So I'm gonna stop as soon as it's dough. It's no longer flour and water. It's all come together to create dough. And it's just gonna sit in this bowl for 30 minutes. Okay. So it's been 30 minutes. All right, we'll take a look at the dough. You can so, see much less sticky now. Yeah. Although as I learned yesterday, the dough can look not sticky if someone's handling it, but that doesn't mean it's not sticky. It just means they're really good at handling it. <laughs> yes. You try not to get too much of your hands on there because your hands are hot, you know? Mm -hmm. So you want to kind of use just very light touches. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do it until I get tired. How many minutes do you think I've been doing this? Probably fewer than you think. Maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe exactly, three minutes? Right? I don't know. Yeah. Do you want to? Mix for a second? Yeah, sure. Good. Is this going to produce like big bubbles? I don't want like huge bubbles, but hopefully we have some spotting and with this oven we'd be able to achieve some like leoparding. Ooh. Yeah. I like, is that an official pizza term? Yeah. Really? Leoparding. Leoparding? Yeah. yeah, it's like these micro bubbles that the outside walls of burn. Uh huh. So you get like black Ooh. spots along the whole uh -huh. outside. You know, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting, I have the harder assignment. I didn't really explain how this works. So each test kitchen editor is, um, responsible for a different like component of the pizza. So yeah. we're just talking dough. You think you got the hard I really assignment? got it, yes. This no, is it's a little all unfair. Dough. I mean, that's the right. whole thing. Right. Like really, everything else is just get good stuff and put it on top of the pizza. Yeah, I'm really, like, I'm I mean, really that, seeing that. Like dough really is really doing the, whole... the work. Let me get a clean bowl. Yeah. This is gonna bulk ferment. Yes. And then we'll switch to the dough that you brought and already made. Oh my God, we're gonna make pizza. Yeah, we're gonna that's make pizza. Exciting. So yeah, I made these yesterday. are happening. Okay. Gravity is doing most of the work. As you right. can see, it wants to be a pizza. The lightest dusting of flour, rub it into the crevices so that we don't have any sticking because that's the real bubber. We're going to put it in the oven. Okay. This is the hard part. Go in and then pull back and then shoot back again. So I'm kind of, okay. So. Yeah. And, and then, then kind of drag it back and then shoot quick. No, back, as it's, oh, oh, oh. No, 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 like, so it's like back. Oh. Okay. Right. You like drag. There you go. Oh, there got it. Is. Okay. Now you can kind of reshape okay. on the peel. It's a ticking time bomb, by the way, oh, by no. the, once it has sauce on it. It's a thin pizza. Should I go? Just, yeah, okay. so just throw it in there. Oh, God. It's stuck. Yeah, shimmy, shimmy. There you go. Yeah, pull. There you go. That's the hardest part, is getting it in there. I was just a little too timid. It's confidence. You just show it who's You gotta boss. go in with confidence. Yeah. Well, this is the same thing I say about bread dough, is like it can smell fear. So like you have to be really confident. Right. It's... Your base level pizza skills are like above average, okay. really intermediate to advanced. Really? I would say, I would oh say God, yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's, I think you could pull it out actually. Yeah, it's done? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that was, well, look at your crust, look at this. I mean, you made this pizza. With your dough and your help. At every step of the way. This is incidental. But thank you. This is a bit, this really is like my first proper pizza. It's really fantastic. That's not basically like flatbread that yeah. I'm calling pizza. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I want to taste this one. Just cause, yeah, that's a good looking Just because why not? It's renewed my love affair with okay. pizza, this pizza. It's very delicious. Uh, well, that's an honor. All right, well, so we're going to, I'm going to basically move on to, on all on my own, making some dough. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Yes, She's on Today was really helpful just to get that dough like right in front of my face so I could see it and touch it and feel it. Kind of demystified the process a lot for me. So I'm gonna go with kosher salt, olive oil, the flour blends, maybe we'll keep the same. And then doing one test with all starter, one test with a little bit of fresh yeast, doing a cold room temp rise for the sourdough, a rise in the fridge for fresh yeast, and then seeing sort of how long those fermentation times take. I just have like an out of body experience of myself talking. Like, so, <laughs> I've said so many of these words in a row. Just like, saw myself. Sounds good. Okay, cool. So, we're back in the test kitchen. Um, Anthony was here last week. I, just for my own curiosity, want to try testing. What do you get with All Starter? And then, what do you get when you add a little bit of fresh yeast? So this is what it looks like. It comes in these big one pound blocks. So I think that's why it's called cake yeast is because it's kind of compressed into this block or cake. We're only doing a half percentage and this will dissolve into the water when I, as I pour it in. So with a thousand grams flour total, I have that King Arthur all purpose. Then we have that high mountain flour and then the grain. 3% salt. I'm gonna mix this all together. We're gonna bump up the percentage of olive oil a little bit, pour all the wet right in. 
So the next step after I get everything all incorporated is called autolyse. It's really just mixing the water and flour together and letting it sit. And that develops the gluten. And so you're already kind of starting off with more gluten development before you mix it. So this dough is the dough with all starter. So I'm gonna do what Anthony did, which is basically just mix my hand inside the bowl. I think I'm gonna throw it in a mixer because if the idea is that the motion of our hand is mimicking the dough hook, I sort of feel like mine as well. Just use a dough hook. I think this is pretty much there. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the second version of dough with the addition of fresh yeast. Okay, so now both doughs are onto the bulk ferment stage. All we have to do is wait. And so we'll check back in several hours and see how they're progressing. And then we will move on to the shaping and proofing stage. Both doughs rose for a couple hours and now I'm going to form them. I should get about nine um, individual doughs out of this mass. So I feel, I feel good about the doughs. Like I, they feel, there's something that feels right about them. What I'm anticipating feeling more challenging is like shaping the pizzas, getting them off the peel, that kind of thing. And I'm hoping that like my inexperience with shaping and baking isn't going to like skew the results that we get so we can really like do a true side-by-side -side comparison. So now we're ready to bake off a bunch of different examples um, and compare side-by-side. -side. So Brad, you're gonna Hello, help, Claire. you're gonna help uh, make the pizza. Yes, help me help you. Teach okay. me, Claire. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I learned about the right way to form the dough. Did you learn a lot? Yeah, it's 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 harder than it they looks. They make it look easy. They make like it look usual. so easy. Yeah, we have two different versions of dough that we're testing. So this is the one with all starter. It's kind of like sourdough. It's made with starter like sourdough, but it's not sour. We didn't let it go that far. Yeah. Same science, less It's pretty less fresh. Zing. Exactly. Same science, less zing. With the added yeast, I think. Oh wow, a little these, more volume. Yeah, it got a little bit bigger. Here, you do the one with no yeast, and I'll Give do the one. one. That works better. And then here's a peel. I don't know which one works better. Whoa, you gotta move fast. You gotta move fast. This is something we talked about with Anthony. Yeah. The dough smells fear. Okay. This looks better. Does it? You can kind of, yeah, no, that's good. Because you got that fresh yeast, that's all. Oh, that, that's the only reason why. So then you move on to starting to stretch it and also at the same time tapping off excess flour. Ah. You don't want a ton of flour? No, because the flour can burn. And you're kind of letting the weight of the dough Stretching itself. Stretch itself, yeah, like gravity. It's got a great feel to it, Claire, I gotta Does it? say. Oh, good. You're probably really good at this. Why, Claire? Because I'm Cause, Italian? Because you make pizza a lot. I never make pizza at home. It's <laughs> and you know, don't make it too perfect. Shouldn't be a problem, Claire. <laughs> yeah, it's not really. And I don't, I'm not even gonna put olive oil on it. I what? Think, I think we'll, we want, right, it, like we want something as minimal as possible, I think, okay. for this. Okay, so the, these are preheated, so grab your peel. This is the, I'm warning you, this is the hardest part. Yeah, I bet. You need to keep your yeast. Oh, this looks freaking very difficult. It really is. I'm already screwing it up. Wouldn't if it had a little flour on it as a little. But it little already slipper? has a little flour on it. All right. How did? So then you want to kind of. Go for it. Hey, pull. we got a whole tray of them. We'll try again. Wait, hold on. This is really not. What do I do? <laughs> Let me try. I'll show you how stuff. You fine. You try. Andy, get out. Andy, you try. <laughs> this is really. Jesus. Just go ahead. <gasps> oh, that yeah. was that so was good. Oh! <laughs> Wait, don't go from that end because I already it tried. Go from that fear, end. Claire. I know. Get out of here. Bunch of bozos. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ready? Now go. It's cool. It's supposed to look like that. I think you're good. You're good. <laughs> don't be mean. Oh, no, we're having fun. Ooh, this that. is fun. This is cooking. I need to tie flour. Just so you're gonna go. Sorry, I feel bad now. Is I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm impressed, but also my feelings are a little hurt. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's okay. Okay, ready? So position it all the way back. So all right, mine, I see you. Oh no, mine's hold on. I see. You, mine's sticking. What do I do? Brad's is perfect. Oh! It's it sensed your fear. That's all. Help me! What do I do? I don't know. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> no. It's gonna burn, man. It's all wrong. Oh. Why is this great? So you're looking for what do they call it? Leopard leopard spotting? Look at see what the bottom is. I looks saw like. leopard spotting. Mine is so sad. 
little hot there, too, huh? No, no, too much flour. That's burned flour. Oh, really? Right on the edge, yeah. So that's why you gotta tap off the flour. Ooh, nice so little air pockets. This looks good. Look at how you have this layer of crisp at the bottom, but then sort of a crumb. Thin, too, nice. On the top. Ooh, nice little crispy shell on the outside, mm -hmm. but tender and chewy on the inside. Mm -hmm. But this has a really nice pillowy consistency. Yeah, that is kind of nice. Huh? You know what, though? It's underbaked. Because it's, it's thick. Tacky. It's just a little gummy. Here's what I think we should do. I think we should each make a batch of the dough with baker's yeast and each make our own of the all starter. I'm confused. So we have four pizzas. Oh, okay. You're the boss. Okay, great. Wait, which one did you do last time? Not last this time one. Last time I did the Friday Not... uh, starter. No yeast. Yeah, this is harder to work with, isn't it? What is this? This is the one with yeast. This is harder to work no with. Problem. What I'm trying to say is that it wasn't my fault <laughs> <laughs> that I messed up. Oh God. I can't, I'm like trying to. Pull it, pull it faster oh, there we go, okay. It's all on the rest, I, I, yeah. I'm trying to teach you, but then I can't really you do are. it myself. You are, I could have never done this without you. Yeah, but. Clearly, the dough can sense for you. I know. So good. It's true. They look pretty, like, similar. See, yours is, huh. a, little, yours is a little thin in the center. Little under, in the center? It popped up a little. Mine's a little thin in the center, too. See the light coming through? Yeah. Here, move that. Okay, so let's move on. And do the yeah. same thing with the all starter version. Hello. Ooh. I hope we're burning. Yeah, I think mine is done. All right, how are you gonna be able to tell the difference? Nope. Wait, now would I you? Got this. I you got just this. moved it. No, so, no, no. So what's mine? What? Mine. This is the first ones. These are the most recent. So. Wait, which is the first one you did? This one. This is the second one I did. This is the first one you I did. I think that one's mine. Oh, see, mine, 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 mine's little over place. Here. Okay, so let's move on. I think that one's mine. Okay, fine. And then that one's Okay, up. so I can just tell by this one's hot. Okay, great. So that's a good texture. Yeah, it does. Would you just eat this crust if it were sitting on the table yeah. without any sauce or cheese on it? Yeah, I would definitely eat that I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm I happy like, with that too. All right, let's try that version that's all starter. Yeah. I do think this has more flavor in the crust than that. It does have a little bit more character. Mmm, there's a little bit of tang. Like, it's a little sour. Rhoda yeah. Boone! She knows what they Come on in, Rhoda. Yeah. You think I that think one's tangier? Starter. Yeah, me too. Team starter. I, me too. I just don't want to, I just am worried that tomorrow it turn, like, turns into sourdough. We'll have to try it. Yeah, I think we just have to basically come back tomorrow and do the exact pizza. same thing again and eat pizza. This is like day five of shooting. Tired. You're gonna make sauce, it's gonna take you one hour. No, it's nonsense. We gotta go find the ingredients, you gotta source the ingredients, Claire. <laughs> You're going to do it. And I gotta deal with Andy, so that's gonna take a couple days. That's true. Okay, so I think the test today went really well. Both versions tasted really great. Um, so it might for us just be more uh, a question of like, how long do we let it go and which version gives us more control over the final result. So we'll come back tomorrow and it'll be a, it'll be a lot simpler. I think it was great to get that practice for the shaping and baking. Um, and we'll just do the exact same test again and see if we notice any differences. We're back. It's, well, I don't know what day it is. What day Today is, it? is uh, Wednesday. Yeah, but what day I is think? it in dough? It's or been many it days. Today we're gonna test that dough with the two-day cold rise. Oh, we went longer, rise. right, in yeah. the fridge? Yeah, But what are we expecting that the longer, what should, what should we be expecting that the longer 24 hours cold fermentation, yeah. what is that going to do, hypothetically? I think it should just taste better. What well, had more of that kind of tangy? Mm, hopefully not sour, just more pronounced flavor, more developed flavor. Mm. And I'm hoping that it browns better. Why would it do oven. that? Is it like a... Like the enzymes and sugars and, I don't know, I don't want to get too... Part of the I don't want to get too sciencey. I don't know. Cool, it's I don't know. I don't be, you know, just gloss over that. Plowing ahead here. Another thing that I want to talk about yeah, talk that away. I was thinking about. I was thinking about the pizza that we tried at Scars. I wasn't there. I know. Have you ever had it though? Actually, I haven't. Oh, it's very good. Well, so one of the things he does is like, because it's his is more New York style. It's baked at a lower temperature for longer. So I want to try that. I kind of like that. Yeah, I want to try I, it. Yesterday it wasn't undercooked, but it was a little moist in the inside. Okay. So I thought yeah. just a skosh lower. For just a little bit longer. Yeah. So let's try Scar's it. Scar's nose. 
Oh, you're going for that, huh? I saw it on Instagram last night. I don't think it's... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm in your world, Claire. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get off the peel, because it's... It oh, won't... it ripped. Maybe yours is a calzone. I don't think I'm gonna get mine off the peel. Oh, this one's gonna be good. Yeah, the first one's Wait, but done. you gotta, I think you gotta top it before you put it on the peel. What's the difference? Well, because now I think it's gonna stick to the peel. What's the, how does that make sense? Because you're adding moisture and like weight to it. I think we're gonna be all right. You know what, I'm gonna stop suggesting Look, I'm that. moving, as long as we move quick here. Shall yeah, how you doing, burning in there. Is it? Yeah, hello. Oh, yeah, I am. Just gonna put that up to the side. For the record, it came off perfectly fine when I sauced it on the slip, on all the right. peel. I'm just Good. saying. All right, ooh, Brad, I got it. It's a nice one you got there. Ooh, a nice. little, little bit bigger. Nice Here. crustage. Hot pie, we'll taste Here. mine first because it's not as hot. It does have more flavor, right? right? Yeah, I sort of agree. Andy, you want a snack bun? Sure. I don't know why, but there's a slight bitterness to this, but not like in a good... What? <laughs> Is it burned? Maybe no. a little charred. Maybe you're getting a little bit of the burn. All right, try this one. I get the tang more from this. Oh, it's tangy. So, yeah. like, oh, this one? Too much, but I like it. I know, it is. That's how, kind of how I feel. There's more tang in this than there was yesterday, right? Yeah. You think so? Whereas this tastes pretty neutral. I kind of like this one better. The one with the yeast? I'm kind of leaning toward, just for, the, just for pizza, I'm kind of leaning toward this version. Yeah. Um, let's do the same thing, though, with the same, each of us do the same dough but bake it, let's bake it lower and longer. So turn your oven down. I have a question. Do you think if there's too much whole wheat in it? I'm okay with it. Okay. I think. Can I see the bottom? Ooh, that bottom looks like the best one yet. Oh, it's best so, bottom in the biz. It's so even and nice golden, right? Yep, keep like, talking. Nice. <laughs> Just that's all. <laughs> it just looks good. This one feels slightly thinner mm -hmm. all the way across the bottom. Uh huh. Overall, this felt like it had a little bit more crackliness to it. Do you notice a big flavor difference? This maybe tastes more sour to me. Definitely. Very good, Chris. Chris with the palate. Like, I love sourdough, but Ew. it's like, shouldn't it be more like this? I mean, the crust is really driving the boat. Yeah. You really have to bring a lot of assertive other flavors on that pizza to get it to balance out. I feel like with every test, like I'm kind of leaning this way. Do we yeah. want to try baking one totally plain, no topping, and just see sure. how we feel? It's so easy now without having to top it. All right, so it's been three minutes. Oh my, look at. Burn right through. Yeah. Oh, no big deal. Just a little. Oh, yeah, fuego. I made, I made a flower fire. Yeah, get in there. So just blast it with the extinguisher. <laughs> you can literally see the gluten right. stretching on yours. That nice little elastic kind of gluten pole. I like how this dough has that. I just tasted this on its own. I really do think it's too tangy. Try it. Try it, just a plain piece. It's too sour. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Shut it down. Get it off the board. <laughs> so let's do a side by side of the version with yeast, because I think we're like we're side by side of what? We're calling it a 24 and 48. See if we see a big oh. difference. All right, let's do it. All right, but I'm using the dough we mixed yesterday, so it's been a 24 hour rise, and Brad is using the older dough, so a 48 hour rise. Yeah. All right, mine's done. That looks great. Appearances, I like that the, rise yeah. and that yeah. it's got that voluminous bubbliness that mm -hmm. kind of indicates to me like, oh, that's the look right. I like, feel oh, like pizza. we're going for. Yeah. Hold on. Taste again. I mean, if you didn't have to rise for 48 hours, I think I'm thinking like, just from like, a, yeah, from a makeability standpoint. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, if you were to go 48 hours, could you if you wanted to? Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like a... The option's there, you don't have to. Right. If you need the flexibility for your pizza making or whatever, you can. 
Did I get it's it? The best one yet. You think so? I mean, yeah, it's just so hard. It's just so hard because we're trying to do all these side by side tests of like, you, like get a little one feet. variable at a time. But the truth is, like in some ways, the biggest variable has been in the proofing. Like I think this is just a matter of like and you can't proof. really test the difference in flavor because the proofing and this is, is so different. Proof. Yeah. yeah, but I love the proportion of like crunchy exterior to like super soft pillowy interior. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. Very good. Good. All right, so you're dismissed. Thank you for your help. Do you want to take some pizza with you? No. You're just, no, no. Thank you. All right. Okay, so I think the consensus overall in my personal feeling was that the addition of the fresh yeast with the starter um, led to a really good result. So for us, the answer, I think as it stands now, is actually both. Um, I love the balance that that dough had. Um, between like texture and flavor overall. We're definitely keeping in that combination of flour. I think the salt level is good. I don't really want to push the oil much more. We definitely went with a cold rise because of the fresh yeast that we're adding. It seems like what we're leaning toward as a group is a minimum of 24 hours. So I think that, that you know that's crucial. And I think right now we're in a good place and it's more important to actually control those other factors like time and temperature and baking. Stay tuned. I'm actually pretty relieved to like be bowing out of this one for the time being. It's been kind of a like long, intense process. What do we do? <laughs> Help me! <laughs> it's all wrong. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, but I'll see you back for the culmination of everyone's like individual component. So, thanks for sticking with us this far, at least. So, all right, it's on these guys now. Yeah, we're right behind you. Yeah, exactly. Who are? Brad tends to talk really loud when I try to talk to the camera. So. The big debate right now is if we're gonna use fresh tomatoes or canned tomatoes, so like... Yeah, start dabbling around with some Yeah, tomatoes. let's figure it out. Is it fresh or canned? Can you tell me that? Get hung up. I like want to be on Brad's team, but I'm on Andy's Yes! Why do you want to be on Brad's team? No, it's so not right. All right, let's focus on the sauce. We'll force it around. <laughs> 